ಓಮ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಚಮರಾಂದಸ್ಯಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ ಉನ್ಮಿಲ್ಲಿತಂಗೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯೇಶಣೆ ತ್ರಿನಾದಿ ಸುನಿಚ್ಚೈನ ಚರಾರಿವಾಸಿಷ್ಣುನ ಅಮಾನೀನ ಮಾನದೇನ ಕೀರ್ತನೀಯ ಸದಾ ಹರಿ ಹರೆನ್ ನಾಮ ಹರೆನ್ ನಾಮ ಹರೆನ್ ನಾಮ ಇವ ಕೇವಲ ಕಲಾವ್ ನಾಸ್ತ್ಯೇವ ನಾಸ್ತ್ಯೇವ ನಸ್ತ್ಯೇವ ಗತಿರನ್ಯಥ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೋ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ್ ಆರಿಗೋ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯಾದುಬಾಯ ನಮಃ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ ರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಾಧುಸೂದನ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಜಾಯ ಜಾಯ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಜಾಯ ಜಾಯ ರಾಧಾ ರಮನ ಹರಿ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಜಾಯ ಜಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ರಕ್ಷಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಭಾಹಿ ಮಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಕ್ಷಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಕ್ಷಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಭಾಕಿ ಮಾಂ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಾಮ ರಾಘವ ರಕ್ಷಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಶವ ಭಾಕಿ ಮಾಂ 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paribraja Kachaja Stotra Sattva Sri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Brinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Haridas Thakura Ki Jai Prem Se Kaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gup Gupinath Sri Amakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Brinda Vandam Ki Jai Navadweep Dham Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Yamuna Devi Ki Jai Ganga Devi Ki Jai Shramaveta Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai Kalon Krishna Book Group Ki Jai All glory is to the assembled devotees all glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. Hari Hari Bol. Hari Hari Bol. Hari Hari Bol. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya. So, just to refresh our memories, because last week we did the special Damodar Lila class. So it's been two weeks since we picked up our Krishna book class. And we are in Mathura Lila. And Krishna has killed Kamsa. Krishna has been reunited with his original parents, Vasudev and Devaki. And everything has been revealed, what the real story is, that Krishna was originally born to Vasudev and Devaki, but immediately he was transferred to the house of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj in Braja. And so now... We will continue where we left off. This first episode is entitled Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Go Back to Vrindavan. Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda were also living in Mathura because Krishna and Balaram were there. But after some time, they wanted to go back to Vrindavan. Krishna and Balaram went before Nanda and Yashoda and very affectionately embraced them. Then the two lords began to speak as follows. O oh, dear father and mother, we were born of Vasudev and Devaki, but you, you have been our real parents because from our very birth and childhood, you raised us with such great affection and love. Your affectionate love for us was more than anyone can offer one's own children. So actually, you are our father and mother because you have raised us as your own children 
when we were just like orphans. And so for certain reasons, we were rejected by our father and mother, Vasudev and Devaki, but nonetheless you protected us. Dear father and mother, we know that you will feel separation upon returning to Vrindavan and leaving us here, but please rest assured that we shall come back to Vrindavan just after giving some satisfaction to our real father and mother, Vasudev and Devaki, and also to our grandfather and other family members. Krishna and Balaram thus satisfied Nanda and Yashoda by sweet words and by presentations of various kinds of clothing, ornaments, and copper utensils. Krishna and Balaram satisfied them along with their friends and neighbors who had come with them from Vrindavan to Mathura and Krishna satisfied them as fully as possible. On account of excessive parental affection for Balaram and Krishna, Nanda Maharaj felt tears in his eyes and Nanda embraced Krishna and Balaram and started with the cowherder men for Vrindavan. And there are one note from the Bhagavatam on this section. Just as a man places his valuable gold within fire in order to reveal its purity, Krishna placed his most beloved devotees, the residents of Vrindavan, in the fire of separation from him in order to manifest their supreme love. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the next episode is entitled Krishna and Balaram Accept a Spiritual Master. After this, Vasudev had his sons initiated by sacred thread as the token of second birth, which is essential for the higher castes of human society. Vasudev called for his family priest, Gargamuni, as well as other learned Brahmins. And the sacred thread ceremony of Krishna and Balaram was thus duly performed. During this ceremony, Vasudev gave various ornaments and charity to the Brahmins and endowed them with cows decorated with silken cloths and golden ornaments. Then, Vasudev remembered the cows that he had wanted to give in charity to the Brahmanas at the time of the birth of Krishna and Balaram. But because he was imprisoned by Kamsa at that time, Vasudev had been able to do so only within his mind. Why? Because Kamsa had stolen all of his cows. But now, with the death of Kamsa, Vasudev's cows were released. And now Vasudev gave the actual cows to the Brahmanas. Balaram and Krishna were then duly initiated with the sacred thread ceremony and they repeated the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra. The Gayatri Mantra is offered to disciples after the sacred thread ceremony and Balaram and Krishna properly discharged the duties of chanting this mantra. Anyone who executes the chanting of this Gayatri Mantra has to abide by certain principles and vows. 
Although Balaram and Krishna are transcendental personalities, they strictly followed the regulative principles to set the proper example. They were initiated by their family priest, Garga Acharya, who is usually known as Gargamuni, who is the Acharya of the Yadu dynasty. According to Vedic culture, every respectable family has an Acharya or spiritual master, and one is not considered a perfectly cultured man without being initiated and trained by an Acharya. Therefore it is said that one who has approached an Acharya is actually in perfect knowledge. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the masters of all education and knowledge. So there was no need for Krishna and Balaram to accept the spiritual master or Acharya, and yet for the instruction of ordinary men, they also accepted a spiritual master for advancement in spiritual knowledge. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This episode is entitled Gurukula. It is customary after being initiated in the Gayatri Mantra for one to live away from home for some time under the care of the Acharya in order to be trained in spiritual life. And during this period, one has to work under the spiritual master as an ordinary menial servant. There are many rules and regulations for a brahmachari living under the care of the Acharya. And Krishna and Balaram strictly followed those regulative principles while living under the instruction of their spiritual master, Sandipani Muni, who was a resident of Avantipur in northern India in the district of Ujjain. According to scriptural injunctions, the spiritual master should be respected and regarded on an equal level with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna and Balaram exactly followed those principles with great devotion and underwent the regulations of Brahmacharya. Krishna and Balaram satisfied their spiritual master who instructed them in Vedic knowledge. And being very satisfied, Sandipani Muni instructed Krishna and Balaram in all the intricacies of Vedic wisdom and in supplementary literatures such as the Upanishads. And because Krishna and Balaram happened to be Kshatriyas, sons of Vasudev, they were specifically trained in military science, politics, and ethics. Politics includes such departments of knowledge as how to make peace, how to fight, how to pacify, how to divide and rule, and how to give shelter. All these items were fully explained and instructed to Krishna and Valaram. The ocean is the source of water in a river. The cloud is created by the evaporation of ocean water and the same water is distributed as rain all over the surface of the earth and then returns to the ocean in rivers. So Krishna and Balaram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are the source of all knowledge. But because they were playing like ordinary human boys, they set the example so that everyone would receive knowledge from the right source. 
Thus they agreed to take knowledge from a spiritual master. After hearing only once from their teacher, Krishna and Balaram learned all the arts and sciences. In 64 days and 64 nights, Krishna and Balaram learned all the necessary arts and sciences required in human society. During the daytime, they took lessons on a subject from the teacher and by nightfall, they were expert in that department of knowledge. First of all, they learned how to sing, how to compose songs, and how to recognize the different tunes. They learned the favorable and unfavorable accents and meters, how to sing different kinds of rhythms and melodies, and how to follow them by beating different kinds of drums. Krishna and Balaram learned how to dance to the rhythm of melody and different songs. They learned how to write dramas, and they learned the various types of paintings, beginning from simple village arts up to the highest perfectional stage. Krishna and Balaram also learned how to paint tilak on the face, by making different kinds of dots on the forehead and cheeks. Then Krishna and Balaram learned the art of making paintings on the floor with liquid paste and rice flour. Such paintings are very popular at auspicious ceremonies performed at household affairs or in the temple. Krishna and Balaram learned how to make a resting place with flowers and how to decorate clothing and limbs with colorful paintings. They also learned how to set valuable jewels in ornaments. They learned the art of wringing water pots. Water pots are filled with water to a certain measurement so that as one beats on the pots, Different tones are produced, and when the pots are beaten together, they produce a melodious sound. Krishna and Balaram also learned how to splash water in the rivers or lakes while taking a bath among friends. They learned how to decorate with flowers. This art of decorating can still be seen in various temples of Vrindavan during the summer season. It is called Fula Badi. The dais, the throne, the walls, and the ceiling are all fully decorated, and a small aromatic fountain of flowers is fixed in the center. Because of these floral decorations, the people, fatigued from the heat of the summer, become very refreshed. Krishna and Balaram learned the art of dressing hair in various styles and fixing a helmet in different positions on the head. They also learned how to set up a theatrical stage, how to decorate dramatic actors with cloths and with flower ornaments over the ear and how to sprinkle sandalwood pulp and water to produce a nice fragrance. Krishna and Balaram also learned the art of performing magical feats. Within the magical field, there is an art called Bahu Rupi, by which a person dresses himself in such a way that when one approaches a friend, one cannot be recognized. Krishna and Balaram also learned how to make various syrups and beverages which are required at various times, having various tastes and intoxicating effects. They also learned different types of sewing and embroidery work, as well as how to manipulate thin threads for dancing puppets. This art also includes 
how to string wires on musical instruments such as the bina, sitar, esraj, and tambora in order to produce melodious sounds. Then Krishna and Balaram learned how to make and solve riddles. They learned the art of how even a dull student can very quickly learn the alphabet and read books. Then Krishna and Balaram learned how to rehearse and act out a drama. They also studied the art of solving crossword puzzles, filling up the missing spaces, and making complete words. Krishna and Balaram also learned how to draw and read picture graphic literature. In some countries in the world, picture graphic literature is still current. Therefore, a story is represented by pictures. For instance, a man and a house are pictured to represent a man going home. Krishna and Balaram also learned the art of architecture, how to construct residential buildings. They learned to recognize valuable jewels by studying their luster and colors. Then they learned the art of placing jewels in a gold and silver setting so that they look very beautiful. Krishna and Balaram also learned how to study soil in order to find minerals. This study of soil is a greatly specialized science, but formerly it was common knowledge, even for the ordinary man. Krishna and Balaram learned to study herbs and plants to discover how they would act as medicine for a different ailments. For by studying the different species of plants, they learned how to cross-breed plants and trees in order to get different types of fruits. They learned how to train and engage rams and cocks in fighting for sport. They then learned how to teach parrots to speak and answer the questions of human beings. They also learned practical psychology, how to influence another's mind and thus induce another to act according to one's desire. Sometimes this is called hypnotism. Krishna and Balaram learned how to wash hair, dye it in different colors, and curl it in different ways. They learned the art of telling what is written in someone's book without actually seeing it. They learned how to tell what is contained in another's fist. Nowadays, sometimes children imitate this art, although not very accurately. One child keeps something within one's fist and asks one's friends, Can you tell what is it within? And the friend gives some suggestion and actually cannot tell. But there is an art by which one can understand and actually tell what is held within the fist. Krishna and Balaram learned how to speak and understand the languages of various countries. Not only did they learn the languages of human beings, why Krishna could also speak even with the animals and the birds. Evidence of this is found in the Vaishnava literature compiled by the Goswami disciples of Lord Chaitanya. Then Krishna and Balaram learned how to make carriages of airplanes from flowers. Because it is said in the Ramayana, that after defeating Ravana, Lord Ramachandra was carried from Lanka to Ayodhya on an airplane of flowers called a Pushparatha. Krishna and Balaram then learned the art of foretelling events by seeing various signs. 
There is a book called Kanara Vachana, and the various types of signs and omens are described there. For instance, if one is going out and one sees someone with a bucket full of water, now that is a very good sign. But if someone sees someone with an empty bucket, then that is a bad sign. Similarly, if one sees a cow being milked alongside with its calf, that is a good sign. And so the result of understanding all these signs is that one can foretell events. And Krishna and Balaram learned this science. They also learned the art of composing matrika. A matrika is like a crossword box with three numbers in each row. And if one adds any three from any side, it will come to nine. The matrikas are of different kinds and are for different purposes. Krishna and Balaram learned the art of cutting valuable stones such as diamonds. And they also learn the art of questioning and answering by immediately composing poetry within the mind. They learn the science of the action and reaction of physical combinations and permutations. They learn the art of a psychiatrist who can understand the psychic movements of another person. They learned how to satisfy one's desires because desires are very difficult to fulfill. But if one desires something which is unreasonable and can never be fulfilled, the desire can be subdued and satisfied. And that is an art. And by this art, one can also subdue sex impulses when they are aroused as they are even in brahmachari life. So by this art, one can also make one's enemy one's friend or transfer the direct ab action of a physical element to other things. Here are some notes from the Bhagavatam on this section. The confidential portion of the Dhanur Veda or military science includes knowledge of appropriate mantras and presiding deities of warfare. Dharma Shastras refer to the Manu Sanghita and other standard law books. Nayapatan refers to the doctrine of Karma Mimangsa and other such theories. Tarka is knowledge of the techniques of logical argument. The sixfold political science is quite pragmatic and includes number one, Sandhi, making peace, two, Vigraha, war, three, Yana, marching. Four, asana, sitting tightly. Five, dvaidha, dividing one's forces. And six, sangshaya, seeking the protection of a more powerful ruler. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So before going to the next section, Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Bharat Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Bharat Hari Yashoda Nand 
Gangana Gopi Jana Ranjana Rashoda Nandana Gopi Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Kiri Varad Hari Jasodanandana Gopi Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Bharad Hari Jasoda Nandana Gopi Jana Ranjana Jasoda Nandana Gopi Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari So this is the final episode for today because after this starts a different Leela section. So this is called Guru Dakshina. Om Nama Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Nama Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Nama Bhagavate Vasudevaya Lord Krishna and Balaram, the reservoir of all knowledge, exhibited their perfect understanding of all the arts and sciences mentioned above. Then they offered to serve their teacher by awarding him anything he desired. This offering by the student to the teacher or spiritual master is called Guru Dakshina. And it is essential that a student satisfy the teacher in return for any learning received, either material or spiritual. So when Krishna and Balaram offered their service in this way, their teacher, Sandipani Muni, thought it wise to ask from them something extraordinary, something no common student could offer. Sandipani Muni therefore consulted with his wife about what to ask from Krishna and Balaram. It seems that Sandipani Muni and his wife had already seen the extraordinary potencies of Krishna and Balaram and they could easily understand that these two boys were the supreme personality of Godhead. They decided, therefore, to ask for the return of their son who had drowned in the ocean near the shore at Prabhasa Kshetra. When Krishna and Balaram heard from their teacher about the death of their son, they immediately started for Prabhas Kshetra on their chariot. Reaching the beach, they asked the controlling deity of the ocean to return the boy of their teacher. The ocean deity immediately appeared before the lords and offered them all respectful obeisances with great humility. Lord Krishna then said, My dear ocean deity, some time back 
you caused the drowning of the son of our teacher. Therefore, I order you to return him. But the ocean deity replied, Actually, that boy was taken not by me, but he was captured by a demon named Panchajana. That great demon generally remains deep in the water in the shape of a conch shell. The boy of your teacher might be within the belly of that Panchajana demon, having been devoured by him. So upon hearing this, Krishna dove deep into the water and caught hold of the demon Panchajana. Krishna killed him on the spot, but could not find the son of his teacher within his belly. Therefore, Krishna took the demon's dead body in the shape of a conch shell and returned to his chariot on the beach of Prabhask Kshetra. From there, Krishna started for Sanyamani, the residence of Yamaraj, superintendent of death. Accompanied by his elder brother Balaram, who is also known as Halayuda, Krishna arrived there blowing upon his kanchal. Hearing the vibration, Yamaraj appeared and received Sri Krishna with all respectful obeisances. Yamaraj could understand who Krishna and Balaram were, and therefore Yamaraj immediately offered his humble service to the Lord's. Krishna had appeared on the surface of the earth like an ordinary human being, but actually Krishna and Balaram are the super soul living within the heart of every living entity. Krishna and Balaram are both Vishnu himself, but they were playing just like ordinary human boys. As Yamaraj offered his services to the Lord, Sri Krishna asked Yamaraj to return his teacher's son, who had come to him as a result of his karma. Considering my ruling as supreme, you should immediately return the son of my teacher. Yamaraj immediately returned the boy to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Krishna and Balaram brought him to his father, Sandipani Muni. The two brothers then asked, if their teacher had anything more to ask from them. And Sandipani Muni replied, Oh, my dear boys, you have done quite enough for me. Now I am completely satisfied. What further want can there be for a man who has disciples like you? My dear boys, you may now go home. These glorious acts of yours will always be renowned all over the world. You are actually above all blessing, yet it is my duty to bless you. I therefore give you the benediction that whatever you speak will remain as eternally fresh as the instructions of the Vedas. Your teachings will be honored, not only within this universe or in this millennium, but in all places and all ages, and will remain increasingly new and important. And so, due to this benediction from his teacher, Sandi Pani Muni, Lord Krishna's Bhagavad Gita is ever increasingly fresh and is renowned 
not only within this universe, but in other planets and other universes also. Being thus ordered by their teacher, Krishna and Balaram immediately returned home on their chariot. They traveled at great speed like the wind and made sounds like the crashing of clouds. All the residents of Mathura who had not seen Krishna and Balaram for a long time were now very much pleased to see them once again. They felt joyful just like a person who has regained one's lost property. Namaste Narasinghaya Praklad Aklad Dayane Hiranyakashipur Bakshaha Shila Tangana Kalaye Ito Narsinga Parato Narsingho Yato Yato Yamitato Narsingha Bahir Narsingho Rinaye Narsingho Narsingham Ading Sharanang Prapadye Nursing Hamadin Sharanam Prapadye Tavakara Kamalavare Nakam Ad Bhuta Sringam Dalita Hiranya Kashipu Tanu Bringam Keshavadrita Narahadi Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Keshavadrita Narahadi Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Jai Jagadish Jai Jagadisha Hare Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Om Tat Sat